So I'm gonna start out with some 20 gauge wire and it's round copper wire that is dead soft. It's from Rio Grande. And what I like to do is I just like to take my stone and make just like a big circle around it. Um, I, this is probably a little bit too long, but I just try to imagine that, you know, this is gonna make a frame and then it's gonna leave me some extra so I can make a bale. This is probably longer than I need, but I'd rather have it be longer than not enough. And this is like almost eight inches long. And my stone is, it's an itty bitty little stone, so three quarters of an inch or in millimeters, 20 millimeters. So next, we're gonna take some 28 gauge wire. Again, raw copper, or I guess they call it bare copper. I think this is from Monster Slayer. Um, round wire. This is gonna be for the branches. So what I like to do to measure this out, is I like to put it on my stone and then bend it up so that it's like the length of the stone and leave myself a little bit at the top. So it's like this. This is gonna make two branches and I I guess it's almost like two length of stone, huh? But I give myself a little bit of the top because you have to attach the wire so you have to wrap it a few times and so this usually works out well in terms of length. So for me, with the size of my stone, this little piece is like a little bit more than four inches, like four and just the tiniest bit more. And what you're gonna do, once you have this one initial piece, is you can just use that as a measurement and then take the wire that's coming off of your spool and just put it right up against it and cut. So every piece is two branches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and it depends how many branches you want your tree to have. The more branches, the better it looks, but it also becomes more tedious. <laughs> it takes longer. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I think is probably the minimum that I would do. I really don't like um, the way it looks with less. It just looks so bare with barely any you know, branches coming out of it. So I would really recommend doing 14. Maybe you could do 12, but I really wouldn't do less than that. Um, so then we have 16, and I'm gonna do one more for 18. So I'm gonna do 18. And then once you have your branches, bend them in half, like so. And now we're gonna take one at a time and we're gonna take our 20 gauge wire and we're gonna find the middle of our 20 gauge wire. Here's the middle of my 20 gauge wire. Here's my little branch that's bent in half. I'm gonna put it here, kind of right on the half mark and I'm gonna wrap it around one and two. Two times, just like that. Then I'm gonna just tighten that up. So it ends up looking like this. And then you just want to grab the next one and do the same thing 
wrap it twice around. And then just, you can use your pliers. I'm just using my fingernails to just tighten that up. And now it looks like that. So you wanna do that with all of your branches. I'm just gonna do it off camera so it goes quicker since it's just gonna be very repetitive. I'm just gonna do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm done and you can take your pliers and you can kind of go just right below here to press down these branches. Just very gently, you don't wanna break the wires. These are very thin wires, it's 28 gauge wire. So if you're finding that they're hard to work with because of how thin they are and they're breaking, then you might wanna make a larger tree with a thicker gauge of wire. So we are gonna bend this now into a little frame that is going to go on the back of our stone. So take your stone and put this on the back of your stone. You want this to be smaller than your actual stone so that it will not be visible from the front. And I'm just gonna take my pliers to bend those edges up so now I'm going to take my stone again just to make sure that that frame is going to work out nice and small that should be perfect and now I'm gonna take my same 28 gauge wire and I'm going to weave myself a bale for the tree. So I'm putting the wire through the middle, grabbing that little tail end to hold it tight, making one wrap around the bottom, bringing it all the way around the top, pushing these together since they tend to separate putting it through the middle so now it makes a little wrap around the top like that and then bring it all the way around and it makes a wrap around both of them and then again one single wrap around the bottom bring it up one single wrap around the top bring it up and down across the both of them and this is just a weave that I've chosen to do on this pendant. You can do any weaving pattern that you would like. You can use half round wire and just wrap around the bale for something you know really quick and easy versus actually weaving a bale which obviously takes quite a bit longer. If you have another weave that is a favorite of yours feel free to do that as well. So I'm going to show you close up. So here's what that weave looks like close up after you have done it for a little bit. And it's up to you if you want to do it. See how my wires, so they started out together and then I'm just letting them naturally have this little bit of separation because I like the way it looks, the bale looks when it's just a little bit wider. Now you can bend these wires into shape, like if you want it to get wider and then narrower again. I'm just gonna leave mine just right like this. And the only key is not to pull really hard on your wire because then it's gonna squish your wires together and then it won't leave that nice spacing. What I do is I use my nail and I bend the wire into shape rather than pulling on it. So for example, right now I'm using my nail, I'm bending it, I'm bringing it up. I never pull on the wire hard at all. I'm bending it around this, again, using my nail. And that really helps me 
not to pull on it is you're just bending it around rather than wrapping like a string and pulling it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to about here. So then it is long enough to be bent into a bale. So once I'm getting close to what I think is a good bale, um, to end it, I just take my wire and I just wrap it a few times just around one wire. This way it's less likely to unravel. Then I trim it off so that the little end, when I just kind of squish the little end down with my plier so that it stays in the back because that'll be the back um, of my pendant. I mean, it'll be like on the inside. I'm just tightening it up, like pulling on it. Make sure that it's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna cut my wires. So I ended up having a little bit of extra. Then I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I'm gonna grab these a little ends and I'm gonna make a loop on each side. Like this. Then I like to use my pliers to hold right below the weave. And I usually bend my bales just with my fingers. But if you feel like it's easier to bend around a pencil, then you can totally do it that way. So I'm gonna take these loops, I'm gonna bend like this, so that when this comes down, they end up being flat. And then you want the little circles to be inside of your tree frame. So if you need to just adjust them, So you may just need to adjust them a little bit to have them be inside of the frame. And then this wire here, which is our little tail end from when we started weaving the bale. Now you can trim it, but I find that it can get unraveled if you just trim it. So I like to wrap it first just pick i'm just picking this wire of this you know circle right here and i'm just wrapping it a couple of times around and then i'm going to flip it over so this the stone will be here so this is where you want your little ends of your wire to be So I'm just trimming that so that the little end, I can't even see it, where did it go? <laughs> I'm just gonna squish that down so the little end is in here and the stone's gonna cover that up from this side. You cannot see it. All right, so this is the back side front. What I like to do now is I like my roots and my branches to be wavy. So I'm going to be doing some extra steps throughout this video to add the waviness. So you can leave this like this and skip this next step. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two at a time. So see, I kind of separated these first two and I'm taking my pliers which are uh, Zuron, by the way, is the brand. And I think they're called, no, that just says use safety glasses. I think right here is where it says what they're called. Tweezer, tweezer nose pliers. All right, so I make a bend one way and then another way see how it's like a little triangle 
and then another one, and then maybe one more. See what I did there? And I just did both wires at the same time. So then I would just do the next two. So bend, then put your pliers back in and bend, and bend, and bend. So again, optional step, but I'm just going to go through and do that with all of these, just a little bit. This is going to be kind of like the roots on the bottom of the tree. All right, so here's my bent little roots. So now I'm going to take my stone and I'm going to place it on top of the frame, kind of how it would be when this is done. You may want to flip it to the back so you can just see that the frame is, you know, centered. And then I'm going to take, I'm just holding it really tight with my right hand and I'm taking the roots and I'm bringing them here. Let me just adjust my grip so I can turn this to show you. I'm bringing them here to the front and then with my hand or you can take your pliers, I'm giving them a nice good twist and I'm bending them forward. Like that. Now, see how this kind of sticks up right here a little bit? I'm just going to press that down with my pliers. Now's your chance to just kind of adjust these roots a little bit. And you can adjust them later as well. You'll get a chance to do that. But for now, this is good right here. How I like my roots is I like for them to be, you know, noticeable, visible, but not too tall so that they don't take up too much of the tree. Now, we're going to take the stone out temporarily, but in this next portion, it is really helpful to keep popping the stone back in just to see how your tree is looking because these branches are obviously gonna go in the stone. So you can make all kinds of long, big branches, but then they might be so long that they go past the stone and you know, ends up being hard to attach them. And maybe they're gonna start out too high. So you're gonna have you know, this really tall tree with all the branches right at the top. And maybe you want that, it's up to you. But if you pop the stone in, you can kind of see where everything is and how it's looking. So here's my tree and what you do is you just grab a few strands now you can do four or three at a time what I like to do is just kind of separate them out and see how it's looking and see how many branches I get and then I can kind of adjust accordingly so right now I have three and three I'm gonna do another set of three and then also another set of three on this side. And I like to keep my trees symmetrical, like I'll do the same number of wires on each side, but you don't have to do that. You can have kind of more of a lopsided tree because trees in nature are very, you know, different. They're not necessarily all like <laughs> super symmetrically perfect. So after this, I'm going to take these wires that are left and I'm going to grab them with my pliers and I'm just going to give them just a little twist to kind of continue this branch going up. And now I'm gonna take, there's um, six left, six wires left, so I'm gonna do three and three. So here's my tree so far. And then, which, ooh. And you can put your stone in to see how that is looking on top of your stone. So that's good. That's, I think that's fine. So now with each one of these branches, I'm going to take them, just grab a random one, I'm going to do it to all of them. And I'm going to twist the wires just a little bit with my pliers. And you don't want to do this too much, especially with such a small stone, because this might 
end up going like past your stone, you want to leave some room for these these actual wires because they're going to be the, the visible. You want them to be visible branches too. And I like to put like little waves in them. So now I twisted just these two wires here. So let me get really up close so you can see. See what I did there? So then I took one wire out and I twisted these two together. So now you have this branch it's going straight and then has one wire coming off of it, then it's continuing and then it's splitting into two. So then I'm going to do the same thing to all of them. So I'll show you on one more and then I'll finish the rest off camera because I'm just doing the same exact thing over and over again. So again, twisting it a little bit and now taking just the two, separating one out, taking just the two and twisting it just a tiny bit again. And then if you take your stone and pop it in, you will see, you can even just kind of gently bend these. You will see how it'll look. On your stone. Okay, so I'm just going to do that with the remaining one, two, three, four branches. So here is what my tree is looking like now. And what I like to do, because this is my personal preference, is I like my branches to be a little bit wonky, like not just super straight and perfect, but I like to put little um, curves and bends into them. So I just do that with my pliers. And I do that at this stage. Before attaching them, you can kind of do it after you attach them as well, but it might, um, you might not be able to bend them as much because they will be attached and they'll just be like a little bit less leeway. See how they're getting nice and crooked? I like for my trees to be a little bit more crookedy. So, last one here. Okie dokie. So now, I'm gonna put my stone in. This is where, if you have a stone um, that is like a moonstone or a labradorite, this is where you check which way it looks better. So that, because once you put it in and start attaching it, you won't be able to flip it <laughs> the other direction. So I'm gonna pop my stone in. I'm pressing my tree, so I'm holding my frame, my stone, and my tree with one hand. Now I'm taking, let me show you which I'm taking. I'm taking one branch from this, and it doesn't really matter which specific one you take, but this is what I like to do. I like to just crisscross those two branches. And you don't have to crisscross them at all, but this is how I like to start. So now, very carefully, flip it over to the other side. Let me see if I can hold it a bit lower so you can see better. And I'm taking my little branches here and I'm tucking them underneath my frame. Oh, I can't grab that little end. There we go. Grabbing that little end. And this is tough. You might want to use painter's tape instead of like I'm holding everything with your finger. You can just put like painter's tape all around the bottom here so it stays together for you if you're having trouble holding it. I just got so used to just holding it with my fingers that I prefer to do that now. So now I'm doing it again. 
All right, now I'm going to grab that little end, pull it. Now there's two little loops. Now with such thin wire, I really recommend doing like maybe four, at least three or four. So this is three. This is going to be number four. Now it's up to you. Do you want to just cut it right now and tuck it under or do you want to wait until you're done and then just cut and tug them all at once now? If your stone got a little moved, my stone just got just the tiniest bit moved there. I'm just going to adjust it so it's centered again. Hold it again. And then I have this other wire that I brought to the back here that I'm going to wrap. So I'm pushing it under the frame. I'm grabbing the little end of it. I'm making a wrap. I'm going to do that a few more times. There we go. Sometimes it helps to just do it on the side. Like if, it, if your wire isn't going through, just do it on the side and then you can just pull it up where it needs to be. Now this wire is very thin. If you mess around with it too much and bend it too much, it will snap. So you just have to kind of be careful about this. Now if you look at the front the frame is starting to peek through a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it down because what happened is it, I pulled on it a little bit with the branch wire when I was attaching it and it kind of distorted my frame a tiny bit and it became a little bit visible from the front. So I just pushed it down with my pliers so that it's not visible. Now the stone is staying in a little bit but if you're not careful it'll slide all around. Now, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see which wire comes next, which branch comes next. And you don't have to do these in order, like you can kind of see how they're going in order. But you can crisscross them, like if you want to just arrange them in the order in which you want to attach them. You can do that and you can have them say maybe take this one and crisscross it like this and just kind of attach them in the order that you want. I'm probably not going to crisscross these today, but I have done that before and that is a nice look. So now this is just going to be very repetitive. So I'm just going to do it off camera. So this video is not super long, but I'm just going to do the same exact thing that I did with these two branches. I'm going to do it with this branch and this branch and this branch and just go all the way down. And I like to alternate sides. Like I like to do this one and then one on that side and the next one and on that side. And that helps the stone be centered. You want to keep an eye on your stone as you're doing this because I find that if you just attach one side, you're kind of pulling it, pulling it, and it's like pushing the stone out and the stone ends up being kind of discombobulated and not very centered. So by going one side, one side, it um, helps keep it centered. But what I'm going to do is I'll attach a few more branches and then once I get, um, see how there's like these little wraps where I attach the branches. So then the next ones will be here, then here. Once it gets close to this little loop, I'll show you. I just wrap around the loop so that the loop attaches. All right, so now I'm getting close to these little loops. So all that I'm going to do is the next wire that I take, I'm going to put it through the loop and under the frame. Sorry, I know it's hard to see. And it's slightly... Slightly tricky here. There we go. All right, so before I tighten it up so you can see how it's going through there. Tighten that up. And you can do that one more time or I'm just gonna leave it at the one, one loop because my wires are it's not really that long to be able to do it too many times. So 
they are long enough where they work and I'm capable of, you know, finishing this tree successfully, but if they were any shorter, then this would probably be quite difficult. So I recommend cutting your branch wires as long as you can. Longer than you think you need. And then if you have extra, yes, I guess it's like a little bit of a waste of wire. I'm just doing this on the other end now. But it's so much better than putting all this effort and then having your wires be so short that it's like impossible to attach your branches. So definitely make your branches longer than you think you need. And this little wire is just slightly longer. So I'm gonna go twice through. And sometimes it's easier to put your wire through the loop and then take it and then put it through the frame instead of trying to just put it through both at the same time. Sometimes it's just not cooperating. All right, so that has two little attachments. And another thing I want to talk to you real quick about before I just finish off all these branches is the bale. Because the tree is so small, by comparison, the bale looks quite big. Like it looks like a really tall, <laughs> big bale. And in reality, it's, it's probably your typical standard size bale so that you can fit um, a normal clasp like a lobster clasp of a chain through here successfully. And if it was, you know, smaller, it might be harder to do, but that's just something to keep in mind. The chain that you're gonna have going with your pendant and making the bale large enough, but not too large, especially with a pendant like this, that's really, really small. So here's what my tree is looking like so far. I'm just gonna finish attaching all of these branches in the same exact manner that I have been attaching them in, and I will come back. All right, so I have attached all of my branches, and what you wanna do with all of them after you attach is you just trim the wire for each one. See the little tiny ends sticking up there? And I'm just gonna take my pliers and I'm just gonna tuck that little end under. And just tuck it away like that. So do that with all of them. And then here on the front, what I like to do, if you like your, these like the smaller branches to be completely straight, then you're pretty much done. But I, really like to make them wavy also. So I go in with my pliers and I just bend to make them, make them wavy. And I like to do that with every single one of these. So it's a little bit time consuming, but just overall, it's just gonna take a few minutes. But I really like the look, like a wavy tree rather than straight, but it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back just to show you how my tree ended up looking like. All right, so here's my finished tree. And then I like to also just ever so slightly make my trunk, the trunk of my tree, a little bit crooked. So here it is, here's the final version. And here it is from the back. And I'm just gonna oxidize it. I have a video on how I do it. I use liver of sulfur, which darkens the copper up. And then it turns black and you polish it up. And I do have a video, um, I'm not gonna show it in, in this video, but I have a separate video on how to oxidize copper. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.